Uh, today we're going to look at more at solving some systems using elimination. So if we think about what we've already done, is we know that if I have the same exact variable uh, or the same exact coefficient on the two variables, then I would subtract if they're the same. If they're opposites, I add. And then in the last example we looked at, we said, well, what if ni there's neither? And so then we sort of talked about, well, we could manipulate one of them. And so that's kind of where we're going to start today. And I just want to go through a couple of these and a story problem on how to set this up and then we'll have some more practice. So if I look, I have uh, negative x plus y equals 2 and then I have negative 3x plus 2y equals 3. It really ends, ends up being uh, what is your preference for elimination? And so um, I think that I'm going to multiply the top equation by 2. Uh, or, and so then that would give me 2y and 2y. So I'll do that. And then I'm going to rewrite that equation right down below it. So 2 times negative x is negative 2x. 2 times y is 2y. That's what I was going for. And 2 times 2 is 4. So now I've manipulated this. So that is my equation that I'm going to set up or eliminate with. So uh, they're the same, so I'll subtract. Negative 3x minus negative 2x is negative 1x. Uh, 2y minus 2y is nothing. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. So then I end up getting that x equals 1. And if you remember, I can plug it into any equation, including that first one, which might be a little simpler, which is what I'm going to do. The negative of x plus y equals 2. If x is 1, the negative of it is negative 1 plus y equals 2. To get y by itself, I add 1 to both sides and I get y equals 3. So my answer is 1, 3. So again, sometimes they're set up nicely where we have the exact same thing or we have exact opposite coefficients. Um, sometimes we have to multiply one equation to match it to the other one so that we can manipulate it. And then sometimes we have to multiply them both. So let's take a look at one of those. 4x plus 5y equals 6. And 6x minus 7y equals negative 20. All right. So I, I clearly don't have anything that's the same, uh, nor do I have an equation that I could just multiply by quickly to get the same. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to multiply both equations. So I look at my coefficients. Uh, on x, I have 4 and 6, all right? And on y, I have 5 and negative 7. Some people just say, hey, you know, uh, if I multiply the top by negative 7 and the bottom by 5, then I'll have the same exact thing. Other people say, well, you know, and it doesn't matter if you look at the x or the y's, but some people would say maybe instead what I'll do is find the least common multiple of say like four and six. And so that's kind of what I'm gonna think about. Um, again, you could just blanketly take the top equation, multiply it by six, and the bottom equation, multiply it by four, and then just subtract. I just don't want my numbers to get super crazy. So the smallest number that four and six both go into are 12. So what I'll do is I'll multiply the top equation by 3 and the bottom equation by 2. So 3 times 4x will give me 12x. Uh, 3 times 5y is 15y. And 3 times 6 is 18. You have to be sure to multiply everything. Uh, on the bottom equation, I have 2 times 6x is 12x. 2 times negative 7 is negative 14y, and 2 times negative 20 is negative 40. All right? So uh, now that I've done that, I, I really don't have to think about these much more. I have the exact same thing, um, so I will subtract. Now, if we go back a bit, I, it doesn't bother me to add or subtract. Some people really dislike subtracting. So what you could do is you could multiply one of these by a negative number, and so that would give you opposite signs, and then you could add them. Again, I don't really mind subtracting, though. 
Uh, so what I have is I have 12 minus 12, I have 15y minus negative 14y, which is 29y. And then I have 18 minus negative 40, which is 58. If I divide both of those by 29, I get y equals a two. Uh, again, I might not use these equations down here. I might plug it in up there. Uh, so I have four x plus five, and we said y was two, equals six. So four x plus 10 equals six. So I'll subtract 10 from both sides. Four x equals negative four. Divide by four, x equals negative one. So then my answer for this ends up being negative one, two. All right, again, so sometimes they're set up nicely. Other times we have to multiply one equation. And in some cases, we have to multiply both equations so that we can get either the same or opposite. All right, <clears throat> so we can't talk about elimination unless we talk about some story problems, of course. So I have a little situation. Uh, we are taking a math club trip. I know that sounds realistic. And there are 231 members. All right. Uh, so as a school, we're taking this math club trip. We're going to take vans and buses. Now the vans hold seven people and the buses hold 25. Uh, we used 15 vehicles total. So the question is, how many of each type of vehicle used. Oh, it's taken almost all of it just to write it. Okay, so we have, uh, if you remember what we said before is we said we want to define two variables, we want to write two equations, and then we want to solve. So we've got Math Club 231 members, uh, seven members to a bus, or seven members to a van, 25 members to a bus, they end up using 15 vehicles. We're not sure how many of each one, but how many of each type of vehicle were used. So really in the question is where your variables are. So I'm gonna say that V equals the number of vans used. Then I'm gonna say that B equals the number of buses that they used. All right, so if I think about this, um, let's look at 231. So if there were seven people for each van plus 25 people for each bus, that would equal the total of 20 through 231 members. So if there were seven people in each of the vans plus 25 in each of the buses, that would give me the total of 231. So this is where our first equation came from. And then if I look at the second one, the second one's kind of hidden. They used 15 vehicles. So that means that the number of vans plus the number of buses has to equal 15. So that gives me an equation of V plus B equals 15. All right? So I'm gonna do a little bit of erasing just so I have room to write things. Because now that I have my equation, I don't really need this up here. And I will just, uh, what I'll do, I'll just rewrite them up above. So 7B plus 25B equals 231. Once we have this part down, we can do the math, all right? So I kind of spaced it out so that we can see. Now, we don't have the same, nor do we have opposites. So we're gonna to have to manipulate one of the equations. 
So I'm just going to take the bottom equation and multiply it by 7. All right? So now I have 7B plus 7B equals, what's 7 times 15? I think it's 105. All right, and then I'm going to write my original equation above that. So the top one, so I have 7B plus 25B equals 231. All right, so I have the exact same number of vans, so I can, or Vs, so I'll subtract, which 25B minus 7B gives me 18B equals 231 minus 105 is 126. If I divide that by 18, I get 7. All right? So in context to what we're talking about, that means they use 7 buses. Now, if I go back up to here, the number of buses plus the number of vans equals 15. So that means they had to have used eight vans. And that's where defining variables and labeling and making sure your equations fit the situation are important. So we're just gonna have a couple of these today for you to practice as well as, again, some multiplying and manipulating. All right, enjoy.